here. Well, we know what it means to be poor, right? Just, just your wealth, how much finances you have, to, to not really have much. And when you're poor, poor is often associated with the word lowly, right? You don't have a lot, you're low, you're kind of a base, you're brought down being poor. And that's basically what the Bible's meaning here. Say, hey, if you're, if you're poor in spirit, if you're lowly, you're going to be blessed. And this is, this is actually, this concept is mentioned in, in multiple ways in the Beatitudes here. Um, I want to say there, there's definitely some differences in the way that it's worded, but more like nuanced differences, right? But the same theme of, of basically being humble and meek and lowly. So it's using the, the, the phrase being poor in spirit, that if you're poor in spirit, you're going to be blessed. And another, uh, uh, probably a better way to help us understand this is in Isaiah 66, verse number one. The Bible says, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? If you remember, it, it, other, uh, another place in Matthew chapter 5, it's talking about God and the, the heaven being his throne and the earth being his footstool. It's interesting how that ties in with this chapter, with what Jesus is teaching on. Because look at verse number 2. It says, For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. This gives us a very good contrast between who God is and who we are and who God's looking to exalt and who God is going to bless. He's going to bless the person who recognizes that God is the one that's all powerful. God is the one who made everything. God is the one who sits in heaven and this whole earth is just like his footstool. I mean, this is, this is so, so small to God because God is so great and magnificent. And see, human beings have a tendency to, to get themselves lifted up in themselves and lifted up in pride and so full of themselves and feel so high and mighty and powerful and just forsake God and say, who is the Lord? Who is God? When in reality... That puffed up man is nothing, nothing compared to God. But to have such a pompous attitude, God doesn't like that. He says, I'm going to look for the person who's putting themselves in the proper place. When he recognizes who I am and they come to me with a poor or a contrite or a broken spirit, right? Someone who's, who's humble and lowly and is not going to think too highly of themselves, but come to the Lord as a sinner, as broken, as poor, as lowly, and, and understanding their place with God. And that's who God is looking for, and that's who God's going to bless. And see... A lot of, of our life and our existence here, in a way, it's like a test. Because what we do here matters in the afterlife. Everything that we do here matters in eternity. The short time that we have to spend on this earth. You've got just enough time to hear the gospel and get saved. And then from that point forward, you know, up until the day you die, that's your opportunity to earn rewards, to receive those blessings of God or to, to rack them up. And that's it, because then it's eternity from there on out. We don't see anywhere in Scripture any other opportunities to accumulate more in, in, in God's system, right? Like, like outside of, uh, you know, when... He sets up his kingdom and then new heaven, new earth. There's nothing given to us there saying that there's a, a way to kind of gain more rewards, more benefits being in heaven. So like it's, it's all boils down to what we do here. It makes our existence here extremely important.